football fans and welcome to Ram Country as we are here at Tenora High School getting ready for Friday night high school football action in week number seven of the 2017 campaign and as big games go this is a big big game for both the teams here tonight uh, we are in uh, getting ready for week number seven and this is uh, the marquee matchup in the Green Meadows Conference this evening the Rams and the Aces both take to the field with identical four and two overall records both teams undefeated three and zero oh in the Green Meadows Conference they share that with the Wayne Trace Raiders, the Raiders also 3-0. and The Raiders a little bit better overall record. They are 5-1 and heading into tonight's contest. The Wayne Trace team, they're facing Holgate tonight. And needless to say, they are heavily favored to win in that game. So for all intents and purposes, everybody's pretty much assuming that uh, tomorrow on Saturday, the Raiders are going to be 4-0. and in the GMC and one of these two teams is going to be the only other undefeated team left in the conference as well and those will be the two teams that will have the shot of winning the GMC title outright. The Aces want it to be them. If the Aces were to take a loss tonight, they would have to win out. They would have to beat Wayne Trace in week number nine and they would have to hope that somebody would be able to defeat the Rams before the end of the regular season to be able to get a share of the title. The only way you're going to get the outright title is if one of the teams manages to win out in the remaining four games of the season. So it all starts tonight. This is the second uh, week in a row. The uh, Aces have been on the road. Uh, they're going to be down a little bit. Uh, number 12, Mason Comiso in street clothes tonight. He will not be participating in this evening's festivities. And, uh, well, they're facing the Rams, which have been uh, one of those teams that have been able to hang in there and uh, pull off wins when they need it. Uh, week number five, 20 to nothing winners over Holgate. And last week, the uh, Rams held on in week number six to just get by Edgerton, 24 to 21. And then, of course, the uh, Aces eked out that one-point win against the Apaches at the reservation last week. So they're coming in here tonight. Uh, again, they, they want to win. They need to win. One of their goals always, win the GMC. Coach Smith is never shy about mentioning that. And also, you've got to put an eye towards week number 11. That is right. You know, we're getting close to the postseason, and the computer rankings that came out this week have Hicksville in their region in Division VI, Region 22, in the number nine position. Now the top eight teams go into the playoffs, so they are just on the bubble on the outside looking in. So the win tonight gets them those much needed computer points. And uh, when you beat a quality team like the Rams, you know you pick up uh, you pick up if they if they continue to be successful as well. So lots of reasons for the Aces to want to come away with a W here tonight. They uh, only, like I said, they want that outright league title. The only chance they have of that is to knock off the Rams here tonight. Next week, homecoming against Antwerp. The Aces are heavily favored, and then uh, after that, it'll be a trip to Wayne Trace where they'll have to face the Raiders on Wayne Trace's home turf in week number nine. Aces, of course, will wrap up on, uh, on week number 10, taking on the Ayersville Pilots. So again, big, big game tonight. Should the Aces come away victorious? It could set up another huge, huge GMC game in week number nine. The undefeated Raiders against the undefeated Aces. But we're going to worry about that in a couple of weeks. Right now, we've got a football game in front of us between the Aces and the Rams. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television. Amy Murphy with us on the camera tonight. And so glad to have you here as we are getting ready to uh, get things started in this football game. A huge thank you to uh, all the uh, staff and everybody here at uh, the uh, at Tenora High School. Again, making us feel that we're, we're across the way. We're in what they have uh, two press boxes here, and we are in the visiting press box. 
So at uh, halftime, uh, we're not sure how things are going to go trying to tape the bands because they'll be facing in the other direction. But we've got some homecoming stuff we can put on if, uh, if that doesn't work out. We're not able to bring you the halftime entertainment. The Aces are going to receive the kickoff to get things started here tonight. Scooped up and out to about the 35 yard line. So the Aces will start off tonight on offense. 11.56 to go here. And again, glad to have you with us. Also, I uh, want to say a big thank you not only to the athletic department here at uh, Northeastern Local Schools at Tenora, but also to our football broadcast underwriters, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. So Aces ready to get things going tonight. Greer works out of the shotgun as usual. Greer, quick throw. Caught by Parker Thiel. Thiel downed almost immediately at about the 43-yard line. But a nice gain on the first play from scrimmage. And they're picking up the ball, and there's a flag on the other side of the field that I did not see. So the Aces are moving backwards, so I'm going to guess that uh, probably that gain was the result of either in well, they're going to go five, so somebody must have jumped a little bit early. So that'll make it first and 15 for Hicksville. And they'll move back to their own 30-yard line. Four wide receivers out, two on either side of the line. Greer, long count. Greer, handoff right up the middle, churning away to about the 36, 37 yard line. I think that was Brickle with the carry, but we'll see. Whistle and a brief stoppage of play. We got somebody out there wearing number 33, and that's not on our roster, so. Throw, and again caught by Thiel, and Thiel again brought down at about the 42 yard line. So it took him a couple plays, but Parker Thiel got him about where they would have been on the first play from scrimmage. And when we get a chance, we'll check uh, with the Hicksville coaching staff to see who is wearing number 33 tonight. Snap. Again, hand off to number 33, who powers forward, and that should be good enough for a first down. So the Aces move the chains for the first time tonight. Ten and a half minutes to go. Man in motion. And that'll be a quarterback keeper for Greer. Greer works his way through traffic, gets across midfield, and they'll take him down at about the 47-yard line of the Rams. Good carry. Pick up of about six. It'll make it second and four for the Aces. Greer again, two out on either side of the line, and a quick throw, caught. Excellent, Brandon Langham will move the chains. So Thiel and Langham both, the, Langham both with receptions early here tonight, both of them. Keeping the drive alive, first and 10 aces as they move the ball to the 43-yard line of the Rams. And again, Greer dropping back, looking to throw, looking downfield. He's going to unload. He's got a man open, caught, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Parker Thiel. Parker Thiel makes the grab and goes 43 yards into the end zone. 
put the Aces up early, six to nothing. No flags on the play. The score will stand. And we'll see if number 22, Victor Coat comes out to kick the extra point or if the Aces are gonna go for a twofer here. Getting the, oh, okay, they had an official timeout because uh, they didn't have, uh, Peyton Tunis didn't have the tee <laughs> for, for the ball. Tunis is the holder, Coat the kicker. Down, kick is up, and looks good, and it is. Victor Coates splits the uprights once again, and the Aces are on top 7 to nothing. early on. 9.32 to go in quarter number one here at Tenora High School. Week number seven of the high school football campaign. Again, the Aces are getting geared up. Uh, next week will be homecoming week. Uh, they'll be playing Friday night against the Antwerp Archers. It'll be an interesting situation, too, because it's parent-teacher conferences. So there actually is no school for the Aces on Friday <laughs> of homecoming weekend. But uh, they are still going to have the parade. The parade is going to uh, leave from the uh, fairgrounds at about 545 and head towards the stadium. And, of course, we'll be there with coverage of the game. So the Aces managed to put some points on the scoreboard. In their first possession, they marched down the field. They start off with a five-yard penalty, but they manage to go about 70 yards and go into the end zone on a 43-yard reception to Parker Thiel from Jake Greer. Now the Aces set to kick things off to the Rams. We'll get our first look at the Tenora offense for this evening. Coat gives a little pooch kick. It's caught at about the 30-yard line and returned out to about the 44. Number 42 with the carry, Spencer Martin, a 6'3 senior. And we'll see whether they mark it officially. It's either gonna be the 43 or 44. They're gonna say the 43 yard line. First and 10 Rams. So we're gonna get our first look at the Tenora offense. Here tonight, again, the Rams 4-2 and two on the season, and like the Aces, 3-0 and oh in the Green Meadows Conference. Their quarterback will be under center. Quick handoff, right up the gut, and they'll pick up maybe two or three. Their quarterback, number 11, is Jacob Drews. Pickup of about four, it looks like, to make it second and six. Drews, again, works under center. And Drews, another quick handoff right up the middle and a burst of speed that should get him a first down. Wow, what a powerful carry. Number 42, again, that's Spencer Martin. Spencer is six foot three and uh, clocks in at 230 pounds. So that's a large young man, and that's a lot of muscle and a lot of momentum to try to stop. And he's got a good, good short burst of acceleration. First and 10 Rams as they get to the Aces side of the field, Hicksville's 46 yard line. Drews puts a man in motion. Quick handoff again to big number 42. This time they get him around the ankles and stop him after a short gain. Gets across the 45-yard line down to about the 44. So the Aces manage to put the uh, stop on Martin that time. I got a feeling we're going to be calling number 42's name and number a lot tonight. Drews again up under center. Two split backs behind him. Hand off again. And uh, second effort will take number 42 Martin down to the 40-yard line. 
And that'll leave it about third and four for the Rams. So the Aces defensive line are going to be feeling that tomorrow. They get that they he, he's taking it to them throughout the night tonight. Play clock down to five. Drews finally gets under center. A whistle and timeout Rams. I thought they were taking a little too long. They seemed a little bit confused. So the Rams, rather than get called for delay of game, use their first timeout of the first half. And when we uh, get back into action, it'll be third and four for the Rams at the Aces 40-yard line. Timeout gave me a chance to check with the coaches. Number 33 is Nate Aaron, who normally wears 64. So that's who our number 33 is. Drew's handoff, and they're going to get him behind the line of scrimmage. They'll take him down for a loss, and that's going to bring up fourth down. So they'll take the loss. I think that was Jimenez that had the carry. And they're going to drop back to punt. And snap. Kick is away. Nice punt. Going to come down and take a aces bounce. And the Rams are going to down it inside the 20. At about the 17-yard line, it looks like. 6.17 to go. Aces get a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage to put an end to the Rams' offensive drive and get the ball back deep in their own territory. So the Aces will take to the field. Jake Greer and company. Tunis going out wide as is Langham and Thiel. Greer split back beside him in the backfield, drops back, looks downfield. Now he's going to scramble, finally gets the ball away. It's caught. Nice open field running. He evades one tackle out to the 30-yard line. So the Aces take the ball to the 31-yard line. And that'll be good for a first down. And they're not going to waste any time in the huddle. They're going to strike while the iron is hot. Thiel makes the grab at the 30. Thiel tries to reverse field. Nothing doing. He's going to get rode out at about the 31-yard line. No gain. That'll bring up second and 10. A lot of people over here wanting... A flag on that tackle on the sideline, but but no infraction. And again, second and ten. Greer dropping back again, sending four downfield again. Greer scrambling again. Greer. Taken down at the 20-yard line. There was nothing doing downfield. Greer couldn't find an open man, and he uh, gets taken to the turf for a big loss. That's going to bring up third and a long way. Uh, looks like he lost uh, about eight on that play, so yep, nine. Third and 19 coming up for the Aces. You'll notice a lot of the Aces wearing... Uh, pink tonight. Uh, cancer awareness, the focus of uh, football this evening and this week at Hicksville High School. 
Quick handoff with a fake throw. And they're going to get back what they can. And they don't quite make it back to the 30-yard line. So the Aces are also going to be victims of a quarterback takedown in the backfield. And they're going to have to punt it away for the first time tonight. Go under five minutes here in the contest in the first quarter. Snap. A knuckleball, and it's going to take a nice roll. It's picked up on a single hop, though, by the Rams and returned into Aces territory. And I think number eight, Jared Greaser. So at about the 46-yard line of the Aces is where Tenora will set up shop here. Drews, because it unlike Greer, he works under center. Drews hands off, and the Aces are waiting for it that time. On a yard loss, it looks like he might have made it back to the yard line of scrimmage. They're going to, yep, they're going to say that he made it back, second and ten. So the Rams faced with a second and long. They'll have the play come in from the sideline. Denora breaks huddle, here we go. Play clock down to five. Three. Drews managed to get it away, dropped back, goes to throw. There's nothing there. Drews running for his life, and he's going to be taken down. He'll pick up a few yards. Looks like a gain of maybe about three. So credit Jacob Drews running for his life, and he manages to turn nothing into something, picks up three. It'll be third and seven for the Rams. Drews, the 5'10 senior, ready to wrap up his career here at Tenora. He's going to drop back, and they're going to send, and he's going to hang on to it himself, and they saw that coming again. Drews going to be dropped, and again, they, he might have made it back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, they're going to say, no, he actually lost about a half a yard on that one, and that's going to bring up fourth and seven. They're on the Aces' side of the field, but it's early in the game, and I don't think they're going to want to take the chance, so they're dropping back to punt. Again, Parker Thiel and Peyton Tunis, the deep men for the Aces. Snap, kick, nice high arcing punt caught by Parker Thiel at the 16-yard line. Thiel. Working his way through traffic, churning his legs out to about the 28, 29 yard line. So a nice punt and a decent return from Parker Thiel and the Aces will have the ball back first and 10 at their own about 29 yard line here. Two twenty-five left to go in the opening quarter. The Aces up six, or make that seven to nothing. Aaron, the back beside Greer. Greer, quick throw out, caught. Tunis, Tunis working his way through traffic, and he'll take it out to about the thirty-five yard line. Pickup of about six. Now they're going to mark him at the 34, so give him five and make it second and five. Man in motion, handoff. That's Tunis once again. Tunis around the corner. Tunis breaks out to the 45-yard line. So a strong run from Tunis manages to turn the corner and get the Aces a fresh set of downs. It'll be first and 10 Hicksville at their own 45-yard line with a minute 52 left in the first quarter with the clock running. Greer, and we got a 
something, and I think that's going to be moving the Aces back five. I'm going to say it's uh, some sort of a false start or a prezi. Yep. So that'll back them up five. I, it looked to me like they had two guys moving at the same time, so it's Anderson. And either way, they'll back it up five. So Aces with a first and 15 now. Again. And it's going to be kept by Greer. Greer off and running down the sideline. He breaks free. Greer cutting back upfield. Greer battling his way down inside the 20-yard line. What an awesome run from Jake Greer. It looked like they had him about three times, but he managed to evade them two out of the three. It finally took three Rams to take him down. No flags that we see out on the field. So a strong run from Greer takes the Aces down into the red zone, first and 10 from the Rams' 19-yard line. Greer's got feel out on the near side towards us. A couple of backs with him. He's going to put Sanderson in motion. Greer hangs on to it himself again. Greer dives straight forward inside the 15 near the 10. Under a minute to go here in quarter number one, and the Aces in the red zone and driving. Hicksville with a second and four at the 13-yard line. And a flag. And it'll be another false start against the Aces. So they'll back them up five more to make it second and nine. So, so far, the Aces, at least they aren't picking up 15 yarders like they were last week, but still they've managed to uh, tack on about 15 or so yards in penalties on little ticky tack type things, false starts. And so. 22 seconds left in the quarter. Clock running. Greer in the shotgun. Greer. Nice easy throw to Parker Thiel. Caught. What a great catch. Thiel goes up and makes a catch on his with his fingertips. Pulls it down. Touchdown aces. So two great catches from Parker Thiel. Twice now, Greer has unloaded that time from about 24 yards out to make it 13 to nothing aces. And Victor Cote back on once again, all the way from France, the exchange student, one of two exchange students. And Victor got a lot of leg in that one too. Cote. Splits the uprights, and it's a 14-0 game with 10 seconds left to go in quarter number one. So the Aces will get ready to kick it off to the Rams once again, and Tenora reeling a little bit. Down by two touchdowns here in the first quarter. So Thiel... By my count, Thiel's got about probably close to almost 100 yards already. Just for two, two plays alone, 43 and 20, 24. That's, that's 67 yards right there and a few other ones. So he's probably sitting 70, 80 yards in receiving already tonight. So the Aces, once again, They'll tee it up, and they have uh, three people who could potentially kick the ball. Number eight, Sanderson. Number 22, Coat. And, of course, uh, number 34, Travian Tunis. And you kind of never know until they get ready to kick who's going to actually do it. And this time it's going to be number eight. Nice kick. It shoots by the up man, scooped up by big number 42. He's spinning and rumbling and bumbling, and they'll 
He's going to carry a bunch of aces with him. They're not going to bring him down until he gets to about the 49-yard line. So Spencer Martin takes it out near midfield for the Rams, and they'll have time if, you know, they've got one second left in the first quarter. So they'll be able to maybe do one play here. Rams will break huddle, and here we go. Drews, handoff. Nope, he's going to hang on to himself. Drews throws the ball. It's caught and taken down at the 45-yard line. That's number 36, Brendan Dingus with the reception. Dingus, six-foot senior. So Dingus... As we end the first quarter, the Rams have the ball. It'll be second and four on the Aces' 45-yard line when we resume play after we switch ends of the field. And after one quarter, it's the Hicksville Aces leading the Tenora Rams here tonight, 14 to nothing. And while we've got some time here between quarters, we want to take some time to say a big thank you to our football broadcast underwriters, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. Jim Schmidt, Chevrolet Buick, and Jim Schmidt Ford lend us their underwriting support, and they're the ones that make it possible for us to be on the road following the Aces for their road games during the regular season. We want to thank them so very much. We hope that you will do the same. Remember, any time that you see uh, Jim or his lovely wife or any of his employees, make sure you thank them for... Uh, their continued support because uh, whenever you see Aces Sports on Hicksville Community Television, they're the ones that help make it possible. The Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick. Jim Schmidt Ford. The Jim Schmidt Truck Lot. And of course, you can check out their complete inventory and find out everything that's going on at all the dealerships online anytime at jimschmidtauto.com. Get ready to get back into action in the second quarter. Second and four for the Rams at the Aces. 45-yard line so far. Hicksville has been able to stymie the Rams offense. Their quarterback, Drews, puts a man in motion as he works under center. Quick handoff and right up the middle, and the Aces have adjusted, and uh, again, they put the stop on after a minimal gain. Does pick up some positive yardage, though, down to about the 43-yard line, it looks like. Pick up of a couple, make it second and about, or make that third and about two. So Tenora with a third and short to keep their drive going. They'll break huddle, they're down to five seconds on the play clock. Man in motion, quick snap. And off big number 42, and he's got a first down and more. He could be uh, headed towards the end zone. Nope, they managed to get him around the ankles, and they bring him down. Looks like uh, about the 16-yard line. That's the uh, Spencer Martin. That's the threat that he brings. Like I said he gets up ahead of steam. He has a quick burst of acceleration, and he was just like that, had the ball and he was gone. He plowed through into the secondary and they managed to chase him down at the 16 yard line, first and 10 to Nora. And another quick handoff and that time nothing doing. So Tried, they set up the same basic formation again, and tried the same basic play, only this time the Aces stop them with no gain, so that'll be second and 10. Again, the play will come in from the sideline for the Rams. They'll break huddle. Drews, again, nobody out wide on either side, just back to the big number 42 gets the call again. And he might have got a couple. Looks like he might have gotten down to about the 14-yard line. And 
They'll bring up third and long for the Rams. Yep, the third and eight. As Martin only able to pick up a couple with that carry. And again, nobody out wide, man in motion. Hand off again and again, they swarm him under and that's gonna bring up fourth down. So again, give the Aces credit. They're able to sniff it out and uh, put a stop to it. No gain, and it's going to make it fourth down and eight. Oh, I take it back. They're going to say fourth and six. He got down to the 12-yard line, okay. So fourth and six at the 12-yard line, and I'm going to guess that it'll be four down territory for the Rams. And indeed, they're going for it. They put a man in motion. Snap is trying to get something. And he's gets the ball away, and they're going to drop him for a loss. Drews trying to make something happen. Fake handoff, a little razzle-dazzle. He was trying to break free and find somebody floating towards the end zone, but he ran out of time, and the Aces take him down, and they'll... Get the ball back on downs with 8.46 to go in the first half. And uh, we're waiting for the officials to let us know where they're going to determine the, that he was actually down. So it looks like the 17 yard line. I thought they took him down a little farther back than that, but that's okay. So first and 10 for the Aces at their own 17. And again, Greer has two out on either side of the line, dropping back, puts the ball in the air, caught by Tunis. Tunis along the sideline, good for the first down and taken out of bounds at about the 30. And the Aces in the hurry up, it looks like. Ball at the 30 yard line, first and 10, Hicksville. Now they're waiting for the play call, okay. They figure out what they're doing. Again, two out on either side. Greer. Greer, quick handoff right up the middle and they're still battling away. About the 35 yard line. I think it might've been Aaron got the carry. As they're untangling everybody. And you have Nate Arend with the carry, and he gets it to the 36-yard line, it looks like. Make it second and five for the Aces. Tunis in motion, but it's going to be Greer hanging on to the ball himself. Greer to the 40-yard line, close to a first down. Again, they're going to call for a measurement. That's how close it is. It's either going to be third and inches or a first down for the Aces. So an official timeout as they get ready to bring the sticks out to see if it's going to be a first down or if he's going to be just a, sh a little bit short. It looks like he's going to be short. Yep, about... A length or two of the football, so third and less than a yard coming up for the Aces. So the, they're going to make sure they get it set properly. The tail of the football is right up against the 40-yard line, and they need to go about a length and a half of a football to get the first down. So third and inches for the Aces. 7.46 to go here in the second quarter. And again, two wide receivers on either side of the line. Greer, first down and more as he lopes all the way out to about the 48-yard line to move the chains. 
Greer needed about a foot and a half, and he picks up a few yards. So first down aces near midfield. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 48-yard line. Greer puts Tunis in motion and hands him the ball. Tunis turns the corner. Tunis still on his feet. Tunis across the 40-yard line on the far sideline. Tunis gets inside the 35 and gets taken down at about the, looks like about the 32, 33-yard line. A nice carry for Peyton Tunis and another first down for the Aces. They'll stop the clock at 7.17. I don't know whether he went out of bounds or not. We'll see if they start the clock when they get the down markers in position. And they do, so he stayed in bounds. So Tunis takes him all the way down to the Rams 32 yard line. First and 10 Hicksville. Greer long count. Greer handoff. Aaron powering up the middle. Nate Aaron showing his stuff a little bit tonight too. Aaron grinds it. Aaron grinds it down to about the 27-yard line. Pick up of about five. And they're going to say it's second and six at the 28. Greer puts it up, and it's another catch, and it's another touchdown for Parker Thiel. Parker Thiel, his third TD reception of the night. Parker Thiel, that one from 26 yards out, I think it was. So Thiel, the go-to guy, gets in the end zone for the third time tonight and puts the aces up 20 to nothing. Here comes Victor Cote to try to dot the I, so to speak. Tunis the holder. Coat first time kicking from this direction. Puts it up, and uh, not much doubt about that either. 21-0. As the Aces go up now by three touchdowns, 6-26 left to go in the game, and even Coach Smith out there jumping around a little bit. Parker Thiel and Jake Greer get a nice little hug from the coach coming off after that round, after that series. So, Tenora will get set to receive the ball for the third time tonight, kicking off after a score. Come to the Aces. And again, Travian Tunis will set up the T. But will it be Langham kicking? Will it be Tunis? Or will it be Victor Coat? Will time alone will tell. The Rams come out to receive. And we're all set. Here we go. And we'll see, and this time it's going to be Travian Tunis who's going to squib it, and it's going to uh, kick up and it'll go out of bounds, flag thrown. It went out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. So the Aces and the Rams are going to decline that penalty and take it on the 45-yard line, which is pretty darn good field position. So very understandable. The Rams decline the procedure call against the Aces for kicking it out of bounds. They'll take the ball first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. Excellent field position. 626 left to go before halftime. Bit of a shift. 
Drews puts a man in motion. Drews hands it off. And the ball is loose on the turf, and the Aces got it. The Rams fumble. I think that was number 21 that coughed it up, Jonah Jimenez. And recovered by number 60, Dylan Meek. So Meek jumps on the loose football, and just like that, the ace is back on offense. First and 10. And it looks like they're going to have the ball at about the 49-yard line of the Rams. So Hicksville. So Hicksville. Looking to uh, make the turnover burn here. And we'll see what uh, Greer has up his sleeve. Jake's going to hang on to the ball. Greer spins and takes it inside the 45-yard line down to about the 44. I was halfway expecting that they might take, a, take another shot to Thiel or Tunis down the field and see if they could tack on six points. But... They might want to see if they can work the clock down a little bit before the intermission. Aces with four wide receivers out. Greer going to hang on to it himself. Greer straight forward, flag thrown. Would have been close to a first down, so we'll see what the infraction is. And it's going to be against the Aces, so probably a hold, and I'm going to guess they're going to back march that back about 10 yards. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which is going to move it back. And actually, the, the foul took place pretty close to the first down marker. So they'll move it back, and it'll be second and about 12. And said so it occurred when Greer was about two yards away from getting a first down. So second and 12, and again, four wide receivers out. Two on either side, Greer looking downfield. Greer pumps, throws, and incomplete. That'll make it third and 12. Tried to hit the receiver coming across the middle and just a little bit low. So the Aces face now with a third and 12 from their own 49-yard line. And again, he's going to put two out on either side of the line. Greer's going to look downfield. Greer's going to unload. And it's right through the hands. A nice uh, attempt, Logan Sanderson. And well defended. No flag, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth and 12. And the Aces showing that they're going to, and a quick punt. And they're going to run down the field and they're going to pin him deep. So Greer doesn't drop back like for a normal point punt. He drops back like the shotgun and deceives the Rams a little bit. They look like they were going to go for it. Snap and a quick punt from Greer. Got a good leg into it. And the Aces churning their legs, running downfield, and they pin the Rams back deep in their own territory. Where it'll be first and ten for Tenora. And it looks like at about the uh, maybe six or seven yard line. Seven yard line. 5.13 to go here before halftime. And the Aces have given Tenora a lot of real estate that they have to work with that the, they were unable to make uh, anything happen with the turnover. So Hicksville not able to take advantage of the turnover. Drews, handoff. And out to about the 14-yard line, it looks like. So second and about three, it looks like, as they get out to the 14-yard line. Rams will break huddle. 
Drews up under center. Two backs behind him. Quick handoff. That'll be good enough for a first down. And I think that was number 42, Spencer Martin, with the carry once again. But a fresh set of downs for the Rams, 420, and the clock continues to roll. Drews. Hand off. And up the middle and a nice run out to about the 35-yard line. So again, a first down carry for the Rams. They get out to the 35-yard line. They managed to dig themselves out of the hole. The Aces left them in after the career punt. Drews, again, handoff. And this time the Aces are waiting for it. And he's stopped for no gain. make it second and 10. Aaron brings, comes in for the Aces. As the Rams break huddle. Rams actually have a wide receiver out on the near side towards us this time. And pitch back and what a nice takedown. Oh my goodness. The Aces were waiting that time and uh, the handoff doesn't accomplish much as the Aces take down the running back after he only picks up about a yard. Make it third and nine now for the Rams. Under three minutes to go before the half. Play clock down to 10. And here comes the play from the sideline. They're going to come up to the line with under five seconds, three, two, and they're going to have to turn the time out. They do. They were going to run out of time. There was no doubt about it. So the Rams burn their second time out of the first half at 2.34 to go in the second quarter. And when we come back into action, the Rams are going to be facing a third and nine from their own 36-yard line. Again, the Aces managing to recover a fumble, but not able to make anything happen as a result. But they did a good job with the sort of a misdirection on the, on the punt on fourth down. They were able to pin the Rams back deep inside their, or near their own five yard line at about the six yard line. Tenora's managed to battle it out to the 36. But again, the time was Ticking away, they finally got the play come in that came in from the sideline. And when you when they when they break huddle and go up to the line, and the play clock is at five when they break huddle, and they're up to the line when it gets to be three, two. You know, they they need to burn the timeout. Aces still have their full complement of three timeouts if they need them here in the first half, and the Rams, of course, have only one remaining. The Rams will come on out. And here we go, third and long for Tenora. They've got wide receivers out on either side. Dropping back, and Drews looks like he wants to throw. Drews is in trouble. Drews is running for his life, and Drews is going to be taken down, and I think they said a fumble. Nope, but Drews taken down well short of the first down. So I guess the ball popped loose. I don't know whether the Rams recovered or they just said it was caused by the ground. So, so fourth and six for the Rams as they're going to look to punt it away with under two minutes to go in the first half. Tunis and Thiel dropping back deep for, and they drop the snap. Gets it up, gets it away. It's going to come down 
And the ball's going to be scooped up by Parker Thiel. Thiel still has it. Thiel in a world of trouble. Thiel turns the corner. Parker Thiel manages to get back across the 25-yard line. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good because not that he's not a good football player, but Parker Thiel was lucky that time. He was able. I thought for sure they were going to take him down around the 10-yard line or maybe he was going to fumble that ball. Uh, looking kind of haphazard as he was uh, running on that return. And we do have a flag on the play back uh, about the 9 or 10 yard line. So there. So they're going to march it way back uh, half the distance. So they're going to officially put the ball now back at the 10-yard line. They're going to say the hold occurred at the 16. So back at the 6-yard line, here come the Aces, a minute 34. And, and Greer, nice hole. Greer and the quarterback keeper manages to uh, get them out from the shadow of their own goalposts. And the Aces, I'm sure, are going to be in the hurry up here. It'll be a first down for the Aces. They'll wait until they set the down markers, and here we go. Quick snap, and again, a keeper for Greer, and Greer again on his feet, and a flag thrown, and that'll probably be coming back in the backfield. That usually means another hold. And it is going to be holding against the Aces. So they'll back him up 10 from the spot of the foul. So again, the Aces starting to uh, commit the infractions, becoming kind of their own worst enemy here late in the second quarter. Minute 16 to go before halftime. They'll uh, back up to the 17-yard uh, line. Nope, I take that back. They're going to be all the way back at the six again. Let's say the, so the Aces now with a first and 21 <laughs> from the six yard line. And again, hard snap. And the Aces again, they're just gonna, they're gonna keep it on the ground. They're gonna be content just to let the clock roll here. They've got uh, a full set of downs. It'll be second down and very long, but that's all right because they're going to be going into the halftime locker room with a three-touchdown advantage here tonight. And there's nothing bad about that at all. Again, four wide receivers out, two on either side. Greer in the backfield. He'll lateral it out, caught by Tunis. Tunis, 24 seconds, gets back to near the original starting line of scrimmage with 15 seconds and the clock rolling as Peyton goes out to the 19 yard line to make it third down in about 11 and that should be it time expires and that's the end of the first half and a good first half for Aces fans as Parker Thiel catches three in the end zone or catches three, rather, and takes him into the end zone. And the Aces go into the locker room up 21 to nothing over the Tenora Rams at halftime. Now, as we said, we're in the visitor's press box, so the halftime show is going to be facing away from us. So we're not going to try to cover that for you since we won't be able to hear the band. So we'll uh, find uh, something else. I think uh, we maybe have some uh, homecoming activities at the school, the homecoming announcement assembly or something along those lines. We'll throw in for the halftime show and uh, we'll be back. So it's halftime. Again, Ace is up 21 to nothing. We're going to take a break, but stick around because I'll be back and we'll have all the exciting second half play-by-play -play coming your way right here on Hicks TV. Right. 